stuff over here. So as it moves down the progression, uh, you can see different frequencies are being raised. Put these frequencies in your piano roll because it tells you what note is being played and <laughs> uh, eventually you're going to come up with the chord. <laughs> Welcome, today is the day when we're gonna look at one of the tunes from our EP called Vibes and Colors EP. This one is Don't Stop, is the second tune of the EP. Usually every tune we make, uh, we try to, you know, use different approach. Our buses and our groups look different, you know, we just try to like spice up every tune, like we touch different production style, just to keep it interesting really for ourselves and uh, just not try not to stuck with the same way of doing things because then things start i find things start to become a little bit boring so without further ado if you don't know this tune um literally came out recently like today's 12th of october 12 days ago as a part of the ep it sounds kind of like this That's how it sounds. Usually when we make a um, tune, it starts, I find myself, it's the best to actually start doing, going with the flow and then later on when creativity kind of subsides, that's when the time to actually organize the project. So this is more organized project. It actually sounds a little bit different from the um, final version because obviously the mastering was taken care of later on. Yeah, we literally just have a free clip on the master that literally take care of the, you know, making sure that the sound is not... Like if you take a look over here... You know, it just, it sounds kind of slightly even distorted, but yeah, it's just like... Uh, I usually put free clip on there when making a tune just to, you know, kind of have a common idea of how it will sound when it's all like fully compressed and stuff like that. Uh, squashed, really. So we've got drum, group, uh, we kept the vocal group separately. This is our vocal. Originally, like a star, you're giving me the light that I need. And originally, this is already a processed rendered version. I've uh, taken it from Loop Cloud. This is the name of the sample from Loop Cloud. If you want to uh, have a look at that on Loop Cloud. And even though it's already processed, been 12 uh, semitones up. We put it another semitone up just to fit the key of the tune. So like a star, you're giving me the light that I need, and you are the thing that I need in my life. So How I like try to fit to the key of tune is to is by trying to f see what are the peaks, the frequency peaks, and see like if, a star, you get if it really fits to the you know scale of of your tune. So on, on the, like obviously it's already processed, but there is some. A bit, extra more processing done, some equalizer to cut down, get down the bottoms, some uh, like a compression to control the peaks, then this equalizer just to reduce the high frequencies uh, in a dynamic way. Like a star, you're giving me the light that I so if I take this away... Like a star, you're giving me the light that I need, and you are... Uh, don't really hear any difference right now to be fair. Uh, but at that point it felt like it wasn't needed to be done some OTT some after OTT just cutting some low frequencies again 
there's many things in this project that we've done that I would probably wouldn't do the same way anymore because like I said our process and approach to how we treat sound and sound design and composition always changes always improving this is what we have from that era of making that tune like a star. some gating to reduce any any like noise that comes after heavy compression from OTT some deesser to reduce the syllables equalization equalization some extra what we got here oh yeah it's just to give the effect of like space is getting bigger and smaller in, in fact more vocal is getting bigger spread out in the space and then getting collected again in mono type of effect similar thing with echo boy and yeah so many of these things in this chain they're pretty much I wouldn't say most of it is necessary it's just the way I've been stacking the plugins uh, most <laughs> when we're gonna look at the bass it's gonna be even bigger okay so let's move on to the drums so the drums sounds like this My favorite part about making the drums in this project is that I actually was inspired by the drums from one of the Mofis track. I hope I pronounce him right, Mofis. Really brilliant producer, amazing sound design and the way he treats his sound. And yeah, basically what I did, I just took uh, his sound and I tried to replicate it manually. I'm not, uh, I did it in another project, but what I have here I'm gonna show you in a second. So. This is how the kick sounds. I trigger my kick with a kick MIDI. This is for the reason that I can layer multiple kicks and send and control all these multiple kicks by just using one single MIDI clip. So this and this kick reads the input from kick MIDI. And you can like stack many of them and you know do the same thing. In this particular case, I didn't do multiple channels. I did rack where I can have parallel uh, sound triggered. So one of them is, uh, let's see. So this is like a hi hat loop. Take that away. This is kick. Bam. So that's how the kick looks. That's how the amplitude looks. And uh, and basically, uh, my one of my most favorite exercises to learn sound design is taking someone someone's sound and try to replicate it by analyzing the different frequency bands and uh, trying to replicate these frequency bands, and then you layer them together and you come up with a similar sounding sound. If you want me to do a video, because that that whole topic deserves a separate video. It's gonna take a, a bit tough time to go through it. So if you want me to talk about it, which I would personally like to talk about it, give me a shout. Just wanna see if you guys are actually interested. And yeah, so... And then I layered this kick. Oh yeah, the processing chain of this kick. Some saturation uh, happening after the kick, really. And that's pretty much it. And here is hi-hat, low-cut, saturation and then after that all this is processing the whole channel thingy so not working not working I've got what I got I got saturator saturator and that's pretty much it oh yeah I'm just boosting some frequencies that needed to pop out in the mix uh, snare same situation how I control my snares it's not always like this but that was the period when I've been doing this a lot and same thing I, I use quite a bit of different sounds so it's all parallel they all you know being triggered together apart from this boy this one is not working we got kick right let's go through this bum, 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 bum. so we got the tone so that's like a basis tone some uh, like noise body type of layer It's like a high frequency transient kick, to be fair, I think it wouldn't even matter if I disabled it, you know. That's the noise generated from Serum. Um, send through equalizer, low cut, saturator and stereo generator to generate some stereo uh, with 
for the snare to create you know the power this one wasn't working and we've got the hi-hat hi-hat gives the tail so the setting of it is just focused on the tail so just because if you if you make the your drums a little tran too transient and not much tail it, it starts to sound unnatural and even with electronic sounds if you give a, enough tail it starts to give more like organic feel to it so that's a little like the philosophy you can use if you wanna even if you wanna make electronic tune you can use some organic principles behind it uh, low cut saturator and then for the whole snare group we get some glue compressor um, this wave shaper to shape the waves because I, I don't know I, I haven't spoken to Morpheus about it uh, but but the way he sounds sound he always like uses a lot of like wave shaping to get this like nice wrapping of the sound I might be wrong it's just the way how I perceive his sound so I try to use the same principles um, and saturation equalization equalization so basically basic stuff all this goes into my kick and snare group kick and snare group is basically just processed by free clip so what we do with the free clip we kill the transients we remove the transients that go above zero decibel they make the sound sound more like packed and cohesive together on the actual drums group we get um, glue compressor a little a little bit dry towards the dry so it's not all the way wet OTT, I love OTT, even though I wouldn't recommend to use OTT if you don't know how to do it because there have been releases that we were meant to release but we didn't because I actually ruined all, all the mix by using a lot of OTT and it created a lot of phase shifting and stuff like that. Let me know if you want me to talk about this as well, I'll be happy to talk about that. So yeah, use OTT when you know what you're doing with this, read manual, read the forums, do some research. But the the effect the OTT creates is magnificent. It's really cool. It has changed the game for me. Just like the same way, like the first time I discovered what saturation does to your sound. So EQ, then we got this parallel compression rack. So without parallel compression on, uh, I think drum. And with parallel, give that more like movement. If I, if I was doing this now, I would probably increase a little bit this movement, but that's what felt right at that time. Some imager to widen the sound, free clip. You see, I'm going a little bit careless with the, with the sound, but like, it's just, you just do it by adding multiple layers of the certain effect that you're looking for. And it can look messy, and some people that prefer doing it the classical way will not agree with this, but 2021, baby. Free clip. So that's what I was talking about the free clip. If I reduce, if I remove the clip, free clip. It makes the transient stuff like kick and snare sound more further away from the hi-hats and stuff. So that just kind of makes it sound packed. And you can like dramatize this effect as well. Let's say if I remove this. You know what I mean? But obviously you get this like kind of already closer to a nasty distortion, so stay away. Now for the hi-hats we got this loop and some rolls from our previous tunes, most of them at least. All that stuff. So that goes under the group called Rest. So, so then I can put some sidechain on this for the kick and snare and some punish like a compressor thingy now we go that's pretty much like it so the way we trigger sidechain tr the sidechain is being triggered the same way as kick and snare is being triggered so the kick and snare midis this boy and this boy you see the kick is being triggered by kick midi and snare is being triggered by snare midi but, si but snare midi is also being sent to sidechain channel so is the kick is being sent to sidechain channel over here so now if we go to sidechain the actual sidechain channel is not enabled but what is actually is it's just this sound of it's like a little pluck it's literally very very small decay just to 
use as an audio trigger for the sidechain of the bass and stuff like that. So the idea is that media sends to sidechain as well, uh, operator create little type of sound to send it to all the other stuff. So let's go to the actual sidechain. So that's how the sidechain uh, sounds on the basses and stuff. Uh, I think I need to enable MIDI and this. So we go, I, we try to like experiment with different sidechains because not all of them are perfect, but all of them have specific type of character to them. Combine them together, come up with something interesting. Truck spacer, kick and snare. So that is being triggered by the actual audio of the group kick and snare, which is not playing, but it's basically reacting to your kick and snare and reducing the frequencies in the equalizer. And that is basically the frequency splitting type. So we use kick with a different setting of reduction of the gain comparing to the higher, the low end of the kick. The low end of the bass is being reduced according to kick differently than all the other frequency bands to kick and snare. So low frequency, kick. This and high frequency. I go compressor for kick and snare. Obviously, when you're splitting your frequencies of the sound, be aware that you're going to have some phase shifting. I find that if one of them has more of a regular slope like this, and the other side is going to have more of a sharp slope like this, it makes less phase shifting type of effect than if this would be like this. Something to consider and experiment with. Those are the settings for the compressor. Then I also use Q3 to pick out specific frequencies when the snare sounds and same thing for the kick. Now let's have a look at basses. The basses. So the basses I use the same thing as with kick and snare when I tried to replicate Morpheus' sound. Obviously it doesn't sound the same, I didn't get as close, but I got close enough to make it my own in a way. So this is sub, so if I remove the sub, this is what I'm left with. This is like rocks in, in rocks, so I can like manipulate macros, whatever I, I have assigned. What did I assign? LFOs or something. Anyways, it's quite an intricate thing going on. So yeah, with, with this macro I'm assigning LFO rate, LFO rate, and with that macro I'm assigning something else. <laughs> um, this is the sound. The, if I was to remove all the processing, you see like how long is the chain? Um, what I was basically doing, I was trying to, oops, <laughs> replicate some kind of like get close to the sound, uh, using basically like a band, uh, sine wave with soul wave some distortion four months to create some kind of like uh, character to it so without makes it more natural sounding some LFO shape to dictate the movement of the sound this one is the one and uh, I think we also got some, no, no not, there's no noise. And then basically it's all equalization, saturation, erosion, wave shaping. So they all matter. You see, I'm taking one, every plugin does something. Uh, 
it's similar approach what I was talking about in the, my video about how I made the Vanza Black baseline. It's basically you take a very simple sine wave and work out work your way from there by shaping the tones consequently by using equalization and different types of uh, processing like equalization saturation some vocoder you can use to kind of shape the you know frequencies and stuff uh, and repeat over and over again so i'm gonna need to make a proper separate video on this because it's a long talk I like using some type of like movement of the filter later on in the processing chain as well because that kind of like rounds up your movement. Band splitter, so in this band splitter I'm uh, processing different frequency ranges differently, so lows. This is because of the frequency shifter. Not even. There is more stuff to it. Saturation, Valhalla, the compressor, this, this, this. <laughs> what and all of this is just for low frequencies which in the end were cut off anyways but you see that's that's the way that's the way we work and high frequencies is uh, phaser creates some type of more interesting edge to it some saturation then there's this Equalization saturation. This. So basically, as you shape the sound, and later on, the, the more you down that way, you go down the channel strip, the more it becomes more about like fine tuning and mixing decisions rather than sculpting the sound decisions. That's why we cut the low frequencies because we, I, I decided to layer with a separate sub to make it more. Um, compact, if that's the word. Yeah, and this sound is very like made the same with the same attitude, uh, the same approach. Sorry. Let me enable the sub. The sub is simple, just layered s sine wave with a similar movement of the. Oops. Yeah, sine wave just move uh, replicated the movement. Not even actually, it's not even doing anything. So it's just actually just the sub as it is, with uh, some saturation, and that's it. So this sound, same approach, pretty much. I just duplicated the top channel and and made a different character to the sound, which is. type of farting and a metal bucket type of sound and yeah and then obviously the musical part so what's cool about like you know how I decided to I, I layered a couple of piano layers um, this is the sample that I've got and what I did with the sample really I tried to find what are the notes of the thingy because obviously I'm not a musician or anything like that but we do have the right tools to identify what notes are being played with the sounds like piano or anything like that because they have very like peak heavy frequencies you see so if you look at each frequency you can actually uh, identify what chord they pl uh, they're playing You can see it in this graph over here. So as it moves down the progression, uh, you can see different frequencies are being raised. Put these frequencies in your piano roll because it tells you what note is being played. And <laughs> uh, eventually you're gonna come up with the chords. And basically this is, mm, this is the chords. Obviously it's all blue because I'm frozen it because my laptop obviously can't handle much of the stuff. So you have to freeze stuff. Big up Ableton for giving this option. <laughs> This type of piano, this type of thingy, and then some extra treatment with the sound. Um, there's basically the idea is that just l when you're layering different 
sounds of piano you choose all different sounds together in one choose what the strongest part of those sounds are and carve out the place for this sound in other layers if it makes sense so if i got this sound and it's very good at low end then i'm gonna carve out the low end from that sound and basically yeah with the same approach you do this make sure it sounds very good in mono so what i have there i have like a hot cue that triggers my mono to make sure it sounds okay in mono this particular one is Uh, it was a little bit difficult to pull this off because of all the reverbs and different types of pianos. The contact one, Alicia Keys, was, um, you know, recorded in the environment. So obviously you're going to have some phase shifting issues. But what we did here, as you can see, it's all just equalization, gating to remove some stuff, OTT to beefen up. And yeah, just small, small adjustments, like I said, carve out place for other instruments. Mm. This, so what I'm happy about as well is that you get like a call response type of situation. Um, this type of synth is uh, layered. I used Vital. I think it was a priest. No, it was just like so tooth wave. I was just playing with the thingies. Um, there's two of them. One is funky, <laughs> and regular. So I think funky. It was a preset that was layered with the thingy. Yeah, it's called dispersed grid. Um, so for them, it's literally just the mat yeah, the disperse, the funky one just takes away. I took away all the low end, so it doesn't mess with the, the other layers, and then yeah, um, make it sound nice <laughs> uh, by you know carving out some spaces, beef enough with saturator OTT, carve out some spaces after that for other instruments, and that's pretty much it. Um, I use soothe to be to act as a side for my vocals so lead vox lead vox lead vox what is a lead vox lead vox is this one so basically what i'm doing is that this sound and this sound they they wouldn't sound as cohesive if it, this sound wasn't side chain in certain frequency uh, you see, it kind of just leaves more space for it. So using Soothe to sidechain, one lead to another kind of blends them together, really. Some sub using Vital for like l upper range, I, I would imagine, and Serum for the like a sub, yeah, sub stuff. So this one is like just a Soul Tooth 16 voices type of thing. You can hear it already. Uh, yeah, high cut some side uh, low cut a little bit more than the mids of it for obvious reasons uh, OTT boost on the lows and then yeah this is basically I'm really proud of the sound it actually is saying perfect mandem it's like our little secret sound uh, but you basically have this thing that you can right click and use text to wave table wave table and uh, have this per perfect mandem in it yeah it's like a little tag this sound just a bunch of different leads really um, and a sub accompanies that this thingy and uh, yeah after that upright this is um one of my favorite thingies upright bass we use it a lot in our tunes i'm gonna be using it even more in our com uh, coming releases um yeah just extract some organic sound out of this get some higher frequencies because it's kind of dull on its own 
get some OTT to get even more out of this, saturation, blah, blah, blah. Bear in mind, it's just the top layer. This is sub. Gives me some kind of like major laser vibes, this part of the <laughs> Yeah, because we like to go into this pop type of sound, merge different sounds together. It's really in enjoyable and I think we kind of find it difficult to stay and doing the same type of music over and over again. It's our blessing and our curse at the same time. We try to take advantage of it and just experiment as much as we can because it really brings you a lot of pleasure. This is the body of the upright. It's just rendered bit of this. Equalization, saturation, OTT, blah, blah, blah the same principles make it sound very beefy to the point that you're happy with and then carve out frequency so it doesn't fight with any other stuff now here just a regular sawtooth with a lucky feeling to it because of lfo sent to cut off regular stuff beefing up saturator ott remove some um, high frequencies if you don't need them always good idea to clean up your sound same approach ott ott 16 voices on one of the oscillators some effects just to shape some sound and yeah just reverb ott eq tape stop it's uh, this one is like at the end it just makes a tape stop effect and some effects well with effects just see what works for you best like i try to stay away from processing groups and try to process each individual channels more these days however i do enjoy saving my time and putting like a quick idea especially at the idea making process putting overall thingy together all the like effects and stuff and just process it with a group to especially like stuff like sidechain and you know yeah also sidechain to another channel overall beefiness with ott it really does good and um yes each individual channels you know i don't need to tell you how to <laughs> put you slam your effects and you know because those are effects in it this is I used to, um, I, tr I tend to use a lot, even though I try to stay away from repeating myself, but it's really cool. If you listen to the high frequencies, I don't know if the compression of this video is gonna allow you to hear it, but without it. It just, there is this almost non-hearable difference of giving this extra hype on the high frequencies and that's where the energy of your old tune is stored is the high frequencies and using these little tricks like this with a white noise fill up the high frequency content so the tune feels more busy and complete really and I already show you the master so basically yeah it's one of uh, seven tunes from the EP uh, honestly at the moment we've done EP and to the point where right now there's many things we would have done differently let's say the bass to me at the moment it sounds a little bit busy on a low mids yeah so what I would have done oh yeah I didn't even go through the bass like group so this is like more beefiness and the control group uh, with some little adjustments here and there really side chaining to the vocals to pop out the vocals uh, imaging on the sides um yeah just stack the layers man so what i would have done right now probably like i'm just gonna do it for example on this group thingy i would have reduced the frequencies on this area because as i reduce here you start to hear the sub a little bit more and that was a thing or well, like this tune deserved a bit more is a little bit more sub um, but the sub you cannot hear the sub because there's too much stuff happening in the low mids and you know they usually say that reduce you to hundreds because it's boxy muddy I think here this is the case you sacrifice the in your face type of uh, sound but you bring out the subs that really feel more soft and nice and the tune feels less sharp uh, probably could have benefited from that 
I only have learned this recently uh, about this thingy. I uh, still learn a lot every day, which is good. I'm always happy about that. That's why coming back to previous projects like that is always cool to reflect and see if you improved that, that much. And yeah, man, uh, this is the thing. Hope it was quite like, you know, I wasn't going too deep into the thingies, into the explanations and that. However, that's the point. If you want me to explain something, to talk about something, you know, I always try to learn and I always try to share my knowledge with people. Ashling, I keep telling to Ashling a lot of stuff what I've learned because it's very good for you to refresh your knowledge and to share the knowledge with others because, you know, just like someone inspired me, having an opportunity to inspire someone else is always amazing. So on this note, I'm going to finish this. I'm Jeff from Perfect Mandem. Ashling is somewhere around. Big ups, let us know what you think and let us know if you want us to cover anything in the comments and we will cover it if we're competent enough to do that. Big ups. <laughs>